Hi, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for your introduction, Ed. And um, happy today to be sharing my thoughts about the market. I mean, I'd be starting out uh, talking about Converge ICT because it is the uh, latest IPO that we will have. It is quite an interesting survey to see that a lot of people uh, felt that the major driver of an IPO's performance is, of course, the growth story. And, um, you know, that said, Converge actually has it because it has a very attractive growth story. Um, and I'll be talking about these four points one by one um, in the next few minutes. First, it's a pure play fiber optic fixed broadband provider. Second, it yeah, it's operating in an underpenetrated market. So, of course, the growth outlook is very good. Growth potential in the enterprise business is also growing very fast. Finally, the COVID-19 pandemic has uh, acted as a catalyst for, for people to realize the importance of data in broadband. And finally, um, if you look at the financials, the financials actually prove that the company has an impressive track record and it has a very strong balance sheet. So everything looks good. So anyway, um, just to make things interesting, I thought of uh, sharing who Converge ICT is in numbers and details about its IPO. Okay, so the first number I think that it's that's, that is important is to share that um, Converge ICT began operations in 2012. It was incorporated much earlier, but the commercial operations began just in 2012. So it's been operating for about nine years as of this year. Um, and again, I just like to point out that um, it's a pure play fixed broadband um, uh, company. And that said, because you actually could be a DSL, you could be classified as a fixed broadband player, but you could be providing DSL, but the quality of DSL is not as good as say fiber because um, DSL actually uses copper. And for example, in the case of PLDT, like 30% of the customers are using uh, our DSL subscribers and the quality of the fixed broadband using DSL is poor. It gets disconnected, the speed is not as fast. Whereas if you're fiber, um, the, you know, it's actually much better, the quality and the experience, um, more reliable, faster. So Converge boasts in the fact that 100% of all its customers are using fiber um, and um, it actually has no, unlike PLD Tin Globe, it has no mobile phone operations. It's just in fixed broadband. Okay. And, and really, the growth is very impressive because if you, if you take a look at um, the growth rate of its customers, it's 93% compounded from 2016 up to the first half of 2020. So this is essentially the doubling of customers or almost doubling of customers every year since 2016. And they were able to do this by um, accounting for around 57% of new customers. So they've been getting most of the new customers during the past few years. And as of end June this year, they already had 731 thousand residential customers and they're targeting to hit a million customers by the end of the year which we think is within reach for the company um, so as of june their fixed broadband market share for residential is already 19 percent which is um, quite impressive for a relative new player if you think about it okay the other business, of course, is the enterprise business of um, Converge. And this has also grown quite rapidly. The compounded annual growth rate in terms of number of customers is around 29%, um, not as fast as the 93%. But then again, 29% is also quite impressive. And as of end June, they had 10,498 or almost 10,500 enterprise customers. 
okay so as of um as of end june they had 3.3 billion in ebitda okay and they earned 1.2 billion in the first half okay so these numbers are important in light of the IPO, okay? The IPO price is 1680, and um, the number of shares to be sold in this IPO is 1.5 billion. So the value of money to be raised in total is around 25 billion pesos. 1.5 billion times 16.8 peso per share, no? Um, so the market capitalization of uh, Converge once it places 126 billion pesos, okay? And um, the thing is, okay, the story is good. The problem is, okay, these are some of the issues that, you know, people may have. First is that um, only 32% of the 1.5 billion shares to be sold are primary shares, meaning only 32% of the 25 billion pesos or 8 billion pesos will go to Converge ICT. The rest of the proceeds will go to the shareholders, the existing shareholders of Converge um, acting as an exit for them. So they will be pocketing a big chunk of the money. So that is an issue. And yeah, that's the amount that the company will get only 8 billion out of the 25 billion that will be raised. And of course, later I'll talk about the valuations. Okay, so talking about the underpenetrated nature of the residential fixed broadband market. So you can see here in the Philippines that the penetration of fixed broadband um, is only 14% of total households. So based on um, the estimates of MPA analysis, only 3.5 million households um, have uh, fixed broadband in the country out of a total addressable market of 18.5 million in the country. So this pales in comparison to other countries because other countries have higher levels of uh, broadband penetration. And of course, if we look at the fiber penetration, it is much lower. And again, in other countries, the penetration is, is much higher. So if we were to look forward, um, there is, of course, huge potential for growth. So a big untapped market. And then for the enterprise business, um, this is the whole market growth. Earlier on, we talked about how Converge was able to grow its customer base by around 29%. But if you look at it, um, the projection is the market itself is growing very fast because, I mean, um, if you think about it right now, if you own a business, it's you cannot survive unless you digitize. And to digitize, you need to to have um, to be connected or to have broadband. So of course, the requirement for data increases. Therefore, although the growth was already 14.7% from 2015 to 2019, from 2020 to 2025, the growth is expected to remain double digit at 14.6%. Okay. And then um, COVID-19 actually was the catalyst for growth. So you can see how everybody's usage of data has gone up significantly. Okay, for video streaming, there was a 145% increase. For video con conferencing apps such as Zoom, you will notice that the increase is 854%. So right now, when you meet with people, you don't meet with them physically anymore. You just do a video conferencing and then social media apps, mobile gaming apps, they've, they've all increased substantially. So, so the point is, you know, in the past, maybe you could survive with uh, mobile data. But now, in a, if you have a family of four and you have uh, work from home and then you have your kids who need to do their, um, you know, homeschooling and they're also video conferencing and every, you know, it becomes more affordable to actually 
um, subscribe to uh, fixed broadband. I mean, it's going to be very expensive if you do it by a mobile data. And mobile data, the reliability isn't as good. No? You always get disconnected. So, so because of this massive usage of data, people find it more affordable to actually um, subscribe to broadband data. And the demand for um, data actually is actually picking up. Okay. So anyway, as far as the track record of Converge is concerned, you can see how impressive the growth has been. So in 2016, they only had 73,000 residential customers. And you can see how the numbers have grown to 731,000 as of in June this year. And for the enterprise customer, in 2016, they had 4,000 300 enterprise customers, and as of end June, they had 10,500 customers. So quite impressive. And um, in terms of market share, you can see that, you know, it's actually been eating market share from both uh, Globe and PLDT. Because in 2017, for example, Converge only had a 5% market share in terms of fixed uh, broadband. And uh, PLDT had 61 and Globe had 23%. But as of the as of in June, uh, Converge already had 19%. PLDT had 52% and Globe had 18%. So it was eating market share because of its rapid growth. Okay. And if you look at the earnings, well, um, earnings growth has been okay. I wouldn't focus so much on the 2018 growth of net income. You look at the revenue growth and the EBITDA and operating profits, because I think there were some tax issues. That's why the growth was a little bit slow. But that said, I mean, it's quite rare to see a company um, that can grow its revenues by more than 50%. And in 2019, they did that. Um, 2018 revenues, were higher by 71%, 2019, it's up 80%. The first half, it was up 64%. EBITDA, well, above more than 60% to 70%. And then operating profits, more than 30% growth, okay? And then, of course, if you look at the balance sheet, it's also very strong um, because if you look at the current ratio, it's actually above one and the net debt to equity ratio is way below one, okay? So the company is really very under leveraged, meaning they can actually afford to borrow more money because um, in some ways Converge is actually a utility company. So the cash flows coming in is very stable and they can actually afford to, to borrow and grow the business. So that's the exciting thing. I don't think they will run out of money to grow in the future to capitalize on the strong growth opportunity that is available to them. Okay, so the main problem people have about Converge, including us, is the valuations. Because you can see, based on our estimates of 2020 EV EBITDA, Okay, earlier on, I shared to you that the first half EBITDA is 3.3 billion. For the full year, we estimate that the EBITDA will reach around 7 billion pesos, or 7 to 7.1 billion pesos. No? Um, and uh, in light of the market cap and the debts that they will have, the implied EV EBITDA is around 15.6 times. And you can look at the valuations of other telcos in the region, not only our PLDT and Globe, but also of the other telcos in other countries. And the median, excluding uh, Converge for the year 2020 is only 5.3 times. Okay, so it's triple the multiple um, the average multiple of telcos. And if we look at the PE ratio a while ago, I shared with you how they earn 1.2 billion pesos in the first half for the full year. Let's assume that they will earn 3 billion pesos. So at the IPO price, the PE will be around 43 times, whereas the median, excluding Converge, is only at around 
16.79 times. So you can always argue, well, the earnings are going faster than everybody else because PLD in globe, I think you'd be happy to see 10% growth in net income. Um, that's true. But for you to support a 15 times EV EBITDA, I think you have to make sure that your profits will grow by around 50 to 70% for the next few years on a consistent basis. And while it was easy to grow that fast, coming from 73,000 subscribers in 2016, now that you have a million subscribers, I think it's a lot harder to continue doubling your numbers, continue growing your profits by around 50 to 70% a year. So um, because the valuations are on the high side, um, it sets a very high bar for Converge to go over. Meaning if our worry is if they disappoint and do not meet those very lofty expectations, then there's a risk that the share price um, will go down because investors are disappointed. So that ends my presentation this afternoon. So um, I'll turn over the floor to Ed who will introduce uh, our next speaker and um, uh, we can talk again later when you have any questions. Thank you very much.